Hi, this is Nicole Kupchik and welcome to 10 Minute Tidbits. Today I'm here with Joel Green and we are going to chat about sepsis treatment Yes. because September is Sepsis Awareness Month. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But before we talk about it, I want you to click on the subscribe button and then there's a little bell next to the, the subscribe bell. button, the bell. Click the bell because that'll notify you when we launch new episodes. So we're going to chat about sepsis treatments. Okay. So sepsis, again, it kills. It is like one of the number one killers in hospitals. And you know, and the thing is we can make a difference. We absolutely we can. can. Yep. Okay. So here's what we have to know, a couple things. So if you haven't watched my sepsis rec or our sepsis recognition video, check that out really quick. But uh, recognition's tough, but here's what we need to do is once we recognize somebody, we've got to just be on right. top of it, right? So Sepsis is a vasodilatory um, type of disease. Right. So it makes your blood vessels vaso. Dilate. And there's so much inflammation. So what does that do to your blood vessels? So as they're inflamed, they stretch further. So once again, what was like this now gets further and further apart and everything leaks out. Yes. And so capillaries, there's a lot of endothelial damage mm -hmm. and capillaries become really, really leaky. So, um, so right now, so let's say we've got a brand new septic patient. Yes. What are our top priorities? So like in the first hour what would be your for your top priority for me the biggest thing is managing their blood pressure like I okay. want to make sure that they've got an adequate blood pressure in order to start my Absolutely. resuscitation. Absolutely. Okay, so how are you going to treat the blood pressure? Uh, so first, I want to get them adequate fluid resuscitation. Yeah, so uh, fluid resuscitation. So yes. let's stop there. So let's talk about that. Well, actually, let's talk about all the things, then we'll yeah. come back and talk about fluid. Okay, so the first thing is fluids. What's the second thing? Uh, well, actually, it's right there with the first thing. What yeah. is it? We're going to do antibiotics. Yeah, antibiotics. So we've got to get antibiotics and ASAP. And then kind of like labs. Yeah. What are you thinking about with labs? So big things for me are make sure we get a lactate level. Yeah, lactate. So venous or well, arterial, which one are we going to do? Uh, either one. Yeah, so you can add, you can do either. Um, venous, uh, by a lot of people, is just preferred because it's what's coming off the cell, mm. to, coming back to the heart. But really, when you look at the, the literature, there's no difference in, like, is, one's not better than the other. Okay. Yeah. What else should we get? Right uh, for me, CBC with differential. Yes, differential. And yeah. for bacterial infections, what's the key lab you hone in on? It's the neutrophils. Neutrophils, yes. absolutely. So neutrophils. And then bands. Do they yeah. have a new bandemia? Yeah. All right, what else are we going to have? Uh, I would like an SVO2. Yeah, so yeah. you need a central line for that. Um, we could do what's called SCVO2, oh, so it's saturation yeah. of central venous oxygen, but you know you have to have right. a central line. So that would probably be a little more down yeah. the, the road. Okay, is there anything else? Maybe a procalcitonin yeah. level. Which would be fabulous. Yes, yes. procalcitonin. Um, um, is there, oh, cultures, yeah. right? Cultures. Yeah, so yeah. cultures. Okay, so Joel, here's the situation. Mm. You've got an IV in. You've got fluids going, but you can't get the culture. Right. What should you do? Art stick the patient. Okay. <laughs> okay, so do maybe art stick. Okay. Yes. But let's say you yeah. just you can't get right. blood from this patient. What do you do? You just give the antibiotics. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so one yeah. of the things I want you to understand is yes, we definitely try to get cultures before mm -hmm. giving antibiotics, but if you cannot get a culture, give the life-saving right. antibiotics. Yeah. Antibiotics will save a patient's life. But it's not just any antibiotic. It's right. got to be the right Correct. antibiotic. Yeah. So how many of you are used to, we call it, Zencomycin? Right. It's like, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, they get the Vanco, they get the Zocin, 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 yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So which one should you give first? Because I'm just bringing this up because yeah. it's commonly prescribed because it gives yeah. you pretty broad coverage between the two. Now, Vanco is mostly, it gives you a lot of MRSA coverage coverage, but, right. but uh, Peptase or Zosin is a little more broad. So mm -hmm. what would you give first? I get the Zosin, Zosin or, first. Absolutely. Yes. It's more broad spectrum. So you always want to give the Zosin first. It's far more broad spectrum than, mm -hmm. than vancomycin. Or the okay. super nurse me gives them both at the same time. Yeah. Super nurse. Bah, bah, bah. Right. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But here's the key is vanco Zosin is not, doesn't cover, it's not the coverage for everything. Right. So the key is, is asking and asking your providers, mm -hmm. what do you think the source of infection right. is and do you know what the number one source of infection is I don't for patients who require hospitalization it's pneumonia yeah. so by far pneumonia is the most 
common source of infection. So you've just always got to think, if it's community acquired, mm. are we putting them on the right, right antibiotics? And azithromycin is commonly used, um, you know, in the kind of community area, but, you know, in the hospital, it just depends on kind of what bugs you carry in your, right. your um, region, but yeah, you've got to get the right coverage on patients. Yeah, and, so. and considering where did the patient come from? Are oh, they coming yes. from home? Are they coming from a sniff? Are yes. they coming from an adult family home where another patient mm -hmm. has recently been hospitalized? Yeah. Because then we treat them like a hospital-acquired pneumonia versus yeah. a community-acquired. Yeah, and that's a really good question to ask. Most people, when you look, kind of look at the data, will be coming from home mm -hmm. for the most part. I know it feels like it's yeah. just, you know, right. It feels like it's from, but, from the rehab. But it's actually things, but yeah. it's actually home. So yeah. yeah. So getting the right antibiotic on board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So fluids. Let's kind of yeah. go back to fluid. Yeah. All right, so a couple studies have been published. We really, really, really need to get the fluids right. right. So first of all, let's talk about the type of fluid. Yes, so we're gonna give so, a balanced fluid solution. Yeah, well let me just be yeah. honest. What would you most likely grab? Yeah, right. And I would say, most of you are probably gonna say, I give saline. Yes. Okay, we need to rethink this, yeah. why? Why is saline such an issue, Joel? Uh, so the big thing with that is the chloremia, uh, acidemia. Yeah, they get um, very hyperchloremic, because if right. you think of the two electrolytes that are in saline, what are they? Sodium and chloride. Like Exactly, and that chloride causes a lot of problems. Yeah. And then, but actually, that's a, that's a ton of sodium in it too. Right. Oh yeah. So there, it's like the equivalent of like something crazy. I think I, I do a presentation on this, like thirty-six little bags of yeah. these potato chips are right. like nine grams of yeah. sodium in a liter of saline. Think about that, nine grams. Okay, so. Yes. What else? So that's going to make you more prone to acute kidney injury. Yes. In, so. Yeah, and you know, and there were two big studies published mm -hmm. earlier this year, this which salted we talked about. And yeah, SALT ED, yep. and then um, the, uh, wait, I mean, like, oh, SMART trial, SMART, SMART trial. trial. And so SMART looked at, evaluated ICU patients in the um, SALT ED evaluated patients coming through the emergency department. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and there was a definite trend toward a, a statistically significant increase in acute kidney injury events in both groups. And then there was a trend toward higher mortality. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if we switch, so what should we give instead then? So we want a balanced fluid solution. Okay. So things like uh, lactated ringers, yeah. uh, maybe some plasma light, or depending on the patient's, uh, their complete blood count, you may want to give colloid products. Yeah. Okay. So Which, let's kind of go back yeah. to just the whole balanced fluid. All right. What if somebody says to you, Joel, I don't want to give LR lactated ringers because um, my patient's lactate is high and it might get higher. Yes. Lactate in lactate ringers <laughs> does not affect your patient's no, lactate level. No, it's sodium yeah, lactate yes. that's you know that's in lactated ringers. Right. And it's not it's not the same lactate you produce when you're hypoperfused. Right. So, so just cut it out. But it is just a rumor that, that does happen. Yeah. I know, I actually yeah. I've heard a lot of really yeah. smart people over the yeah. years say that. So no, so LR does not make your lactate, your patient's lactate level get higher. Okay. So Joel, what about this one? Hey Joel, I don't want to give LR because um, it has too much potassium in it. Yeah. So if you actually look at the potassium concentration in the value, it's actually 3.5, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like a little right. less than four mil equivalents. Yeah. And actually there have been two studies published because of the concentration between fluid and electrolyte. Mm -hmm. When you give LR, it right. actually could cause your potassium, potassium to go, go down. down. Yeah. So I mean, so like these are those kind of like myth buster mm -hmm. things that you've just, just, you know, stop. Okay. So if you're going to grab a fluid, grab a balanced fluid. Right. So either LR or um, plasma light A. So, mm -hmm. okay. Cool. So, uh, so how do we decide how much fluid to give? Mm -hmm. So, what do the guy? What do the guidelines say? They say. About 30 cc, uh, 30 mLs per kilo. Yeah, so okay, so 30 cc's per kilo. So, what, what if a patient weighs like 150 kilos though? Yeah, then they're gonna. Well, so what CMS is now saying is that if you've got somebody who's morbidly obese, use their predicted or ideal body weight versus their actual mm -hmm. body weight. And you know, fluid matters. Fluid is a drug. You have to right. think about it like a drug. And we just have to be sure not to overdo it with fluid. Right. It's just, it's absolutely detrimental. 
In fact, um, there was a study published out of Seattle, Washington two years ago uh, demonstrating, now it was retrospective, so kind of mm -hmm. keep that in mind, but, um, but when patients had a positive fluid balance coming out of the ICU, they didn't mobilize and they had a much higher chance of going to a rehab facility mm -hmm. or extended care facility. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. So fluid matters. So how do we get the fluid right is the magic question. Yes. Yeah, so that's always a balance. Yeah. Um, so big things to watch for is, you know, is your patient making urine okay so sometimes we shoot for that but sure. we don't want to keep giving them fluid until they make urine yeah no That's so i wouldn't good use answer. urine to yeah. gauge fluid of right. dosing okay uh, but use, it's a sign you should it's watch. a sign yep uh mm -hmm. pulse pressure variation Okay, so that would be more of an ICU yep. thing. So if you're in the ICU and the patient has an R line, there's a lot of rules to using stroke right. volume variability and pulse yep. pressure variability. So you have to be on a ventilator, eight cc's per kilo, closed, closed chest. chest, regular rhythm. rhythm. And so you take this many yeah. patients and reduce it to this many. Right, body, especially so. septic patients are not gonna meet a lot of those criteria. Yes, yeah. but the other part of the art line technologies mm -hmm. is you can measure stroke, stroke volume. volume and that you do not have to be intubated mm -hmm. right. you know and all those things that preclude you from using mm -hmm. the stroke volume variability yeah. okay now there's some other novel devices right. out there there is uh you can do things like passive leg raise you can mm -hmm. do things uh, well passive leg raise would be a test right. that you use with another technology mm -hmm. so what technologies could we use Just i mean and title so end title CO2, yeah, absolutely. There was actually a couple good validation studies, and that is non-invasive. And you know what? Everyone's got it. Yeah. Everyone has end title well, CO2. should have it right now. Yeah, whether you have to wipe the dust off your devices, that's your issue. But, yeah. but you should have end title CO2 because you should be using it for mm -hmm. moderate sedation. Yep. Um, we could use uh, any stroke volume technology. So there's um, one where you, it's called bowel reactants where you put patches, um, electrodes on the patient's chest. There's one that you put little, um, little like almost little blood pressure right. cuffs on the patient fingers so there's lots of different ways to measure and the one of the big sayings right now is you know should stroke volume be the sixth vital sign right. you know and, and sep says i don't know i kind of think it should yeah that's a good it's an easy enough way to get it now yeah. yeah and so the whole idea so here's the idea is when you bolus a patient with fluid mm -hmm. what do you want to see happen a lot of you might say i the heart rate to come down and the blood pressure yeah. to go up. Okay, fine, fair. Right. But actually, heart rate and blood pressures are, are super poor predictors. Yeah. What you really want to know is what is their heart going to do with that fluid? Mm -hmm. Is it going to mobilize the fluid yeah. to the places it needs to get to? Or is it going to go out the vascular system and then third space, third space. into the skin? And cause con tons of yeah. issues, you know? So anyway, yeah. And so the idea being you bolus a patient with fluid, their stroke volume should go up. So there's little mini tests we can do before we commit to like a full liter. Mm -hmm. And so this, I think that the place for this to be done would be like after a patient's gotten their initial volume right. resuscitation, then you can bring in stroke volume measures and, and just see what is the patient's heart going to do in response mm -hmm. to that fluid yeah. given so well and then there as we do other things as we start to give them antibiotics and if we're doing other treatments with them supporting their lungs supporting their heart as we're doing those other treatments the more effective the fluid is so that's why we don't need as much yeah. of it too yeah absolutely so anyway okay so bottom line though just to kind of wrap up those initial treatments of sepsis is you want to get your labs. Get so your labs. CBC differential cultures. Lactate. Lactate. If you have an SpO2, get one. Uh, you or should a get CBO2. a CBO2. Yes, you should get a chemistry. Yeah, uh, and then also procalcitonin, yep. right? So get all your labs. All right, so you get your labs. First modality is a treatment. Mm. Two that we right. focus on. Yes. Supporting blood pressure with a fluid management resuscitation, yep. and then we're going to give antibiotics. Antibiotics, yeah. So those would be kind of your two mainstay treatments mm -hmm. early in steps. You've got to get the fluid and antibiotic. And again, what type of fluid are you going to choose? We're going to use a balanced fluid. Yeah, balanced fluid, like LR or plasmolite. Yeah, and this, I, honestly, it's such an easy thing to do. Just mm -hmm. kind of switch and stop doing saline. Yeah. So anyway, okay. And then, you know, and just re-monitor your patients. Lactate levels should come down. Right. Um, Procalcitonin levels are usually measured every day. And those should come down when those get back to normal you can discontinue antibiotics mm -hmm. early um, in a lot of patients and you know and just really watch for signs of deterioration um, we'll do another episode where we'll talk about vasopressors because that's kind of a whole nother yeah. um, idea but um, if you want to know a little bit about the new vasopressor Joel and I did an episode uh, called Athos 3 where you can check out the new vasopressor yeah. so anyway super exciting all right well I'm Nicole Kupchuk this is Joel Green and this is 10 minute tidbits